Hello again, Robert Smitty Smith here, and in this little segment, I'm going to discuss probably the three things that cause the most confusion for young designers and uh, Ricky racers when it comes to the steering geometry of a car. We're going to talk about kingpin inclination, caster, and scrub radius, and how they interact and affect the handling of the car. Here behind me I have a little solid steel little analog device that I built up out of scrap metal and put some old uh, small tires on it. And I've created it with a pseudo front end mechanism. Here we have our two kingpins. Here we have the upright. Here we have the wheel spindle. Here we have a wheel which goes on the spindle with a retaining nut. I've set this up. You'll have to do virtually the same thing with your full-size car. Now, I've had, took a lot of trouble to level this tabletop to get it semi-level. These benches that the analog is sitting on have shims under. Why? Because floors, especially concrete floors, have have drainage angle to them. Very few are absolutely flat. When you're setting up the geometry and adjustments of your car in the shop, you need a long board that's straight and true and you need to put a fair size spirit level on it to make sure that you get things level in X and Y. If you don't have it leveled in X and Y, you're on a tilt and your readings will be um, off. So. Kingpins. Kingpins allow the wheels to rotate around a point. Now, if we have virtually no angularity from vertical on the kingpin, which I have here, I actually measured it earlier and it's about one degree or less. Now, back in when I was young and in school, we had to use very sophisticated spirit levels that were very expensive. Nowadays, you can go down to Lowe's or Home Depot, buy one of these little devils, and they're accurate to a tenth of a degree, $50. They're also magnetic, which means they will actually attach themselves to a steel upright. And I can sit here and I'm reading 89.3 degrees on the upright. So therefore, it's fairly vertical. I can also use a line of sight against the kingpin and see what its angularity is by closing one eye and sighting. And so that looks to be a little about 88 degrees. So that may be two degrees off. It's sitting on a jack here, so that moves it a little bit. But if we look at our air gap under here, which I'll raise the jack up a little bit, because this is vertical, the wheel should pivot around and the gap should remain more or less the same because there's no tilting geometry to make the wheel assembly dive down or rise up because our kingpin inclination is virtually zero or only one or two degrees at most. Take the wheel off, move it again. Here again, it's pivoting around this point. As you can see, if this kingpin is vertical and this is set up more or less 90 degrees to it, it's just going to swing around and it's going to stay parallel with the ground. Just that simple. Now, this is kingpin and it has let's say only one or two degrees of inclination. Inclination is, I'll leave that off. Inclination is just the tilt from vertical. That's all kingpin is. Now, when we put a wheel on this thing, and we get it straight ahead and we lower it down, the center of the tire contact is going to be a line right here. The kingpin is over here. This distance, because this is moving in an arc, and an arc is merely part of a circle, this is scrub radius. 
which means that the vehicle is sitting still, but the wheel must scrub somewhat to tilt around. This is scrub radius, and it is greatly, greatly affected and controlled by kingpin inclination and caster, which we will get into later in a few minutes. Now, as I say, there's no tilt this way and there's no tilt this way to speak of. So we have zero caster, zero kingpin inclination. So the tire actually just swings around parallel to the ground. No up, and no down. All right, through the miracle of time-lapse photography, we now have kingpin inclination. I made this little analog where I could have zero kingpin inclination or I could put kingpin inclination in. And if we put our inclinometer up there, with it, think about it, we'll have about 12 degrees or so. Yeah, that's 77 and a half, 78, 80, 90. So we got 12 and a half degrees of kingpin inclination. And guess what? When we put our wheel back on it, it's still upright. Because the spindle is still relatively parallel with the ground. However, something has changed when we turn the wheel from straight ahead with the steering system. And that is, if you will observe the gap closely, I'll crank it up so we have a visible gap. As the steering system, through its tie rods and push-pull rods, rotates around the pivot, now because the pivoting point is inclined, you will actually see the wheel go down. When it moves forward, it goes up because it's lifted into the air, and when it goes to the rear, guess what? It also goes down. Which means if you start out with it sitting on the ground and you turn it around its pivot, it actually forces the front axle into the air. It lifts this end of the car. And it lifts that end of the car with the wheel turning going forward or going to the rear. This is a self-centering mechanism that uses the weight of the car pressing down to try to bring the wheel back to this point because this is the point of repose here. If you move it forward, it's lifted the car and then the, car, the weight of the car is pushing it back down and it wants to move the wheel back here. This is a self-centering feature so that you have stability in a straight line. And you need some of this. This is 12 degrees and the more you have, the more self-centering you will have. However, things aren't so simple, unfortunately. If that was the only variable we had, we would have it made. Now, I'm going to take this off, move it again. You can see spindle's going to swing down, and then it's going to go back to, to parallel, then it's going to swing down again. Now, if you notice, because it's swinging down at an angle, Guess what? It's got a tilt on it. Here it's parallel. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to force the tires to go on an edge. And the wider the tires, the more severe the dive onto the edge. So that's a little complication we've thrown into the mix. Kingpin inclination. Now let's go back to scrub radius. Before, when it was vertical, the pivot point was over here. Now we've inclined it. It's moved closer to the contact patch. So we have been, if the contact patch is on a line under there and we're here now, we're only this far away from the contact patch. So we have decreased our scrub radius. Well, what does scrub radius do? Lots of things. I'm going to talk about them briefly. The real rule to remember is that there is no really real rule set in stone about this because it depends on width of the tire, stiffness of the tire, all the other geometries working together create the final handling characteristics of the vehicle. Just using scrub radius as an absolute will only 
lead to folly. But here's the basic group. As you decrease scrub radius, you put more and more of the braking load because this scrub radius, if it was actually inside the wheel and pointing at the contact patch to the tire, that would be center point steering. Then all the braking loads and the loads running through potholes and over ripples and everything would pass through the kingpins. Because we have this radius and we have a steering linkage, let's say we have an arm here coming out here that actually steers the wheel, well guess what? Now as this thing is jostled around, that a percentage of that load is going into the steering mechanism. Dry, it will, the greater the scrub radius, the further apart it is, the more will be imparted into the steering, especially under braking. Especially under braking. And because when you brake, the wheels want to do this, and if you have your tie rods to the rear, the tie rods go into compression, they can actually bow and give and become a spring and the wheels can wiggle, 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 wiggle under braking. You have to have a super robust steering system if you're running a lot of scrub radius. You can tear your steering system up with all the wheel load forces that are being transmitted into the steering. But that's the downside. The upside is it increases the driver's feel of what's going on at the tires. In super speedway racing at 200 miles an hour in the corners, you want to have the best feel possible. In road racing where you're in a corner for two to six, seven seconds at a time and you're trying to bring those tires right to their peak of traction, you need to have feedback to do that. You need a lot of feel in high speed events with high speed cornering. In autocross, I personally don't think you need as much. Why? Because you're doing this. What you really need in autocross, you don't have time enough to fool around and play the violin and try to get that note just perfect. You're really just cutting, thrusting the car around. What you need is a quick responding system. And feel, I think, is you need feel, but what you really need is rising rate. So as you turn it, the effort goes up. And as you come out of it, the effort goes down. That will give you a sense of feel and position. That super quantified right on the razor edge of best traction feel, you don't have time enough to, to do that in autocross. It's literally the car is just being snatched around. So I think you can get away with a lot less scrub radius, which puts a lot more of the wheel loading and everything through the kingpin, takes the load off your steering. There's always a best balance. And you have to sort of find that. And if you're lucky, you hit it right away. If you're unlucky, you don't hit it at all. But the car is still drivable. Because if there's one rule of thumb that should always, one crew chief rule of thumb, that should absolutely always, always be followed is that what really matters is when this tire is hard over and the load is transferred into, is it vertical to the surface of the track? If it's tilted, that's not a good thing. Dynamically, the tire and wheel should be as vertical as possible to be putting down the maximum contact patch, symmetrical contact patch on the track. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is <clears throat> one of the main secrets of it. So kingpin inclination, scrub radius. Now we're about to take on caster.